got mail. button when you're ready to play. Then away we go! I brought snack money for our field trip to the wild animal park. Sheesh, hard to believe that Frizz is finally taking us on a normal field trip. The way I see it, that remains to be seen. Wow, that lion's teeth look awfully big. It's a good thing, too, since he's a carnivore and needs strong, sharp teeth to eat meat. <laughs> These are my pet goldfish, fastball, shortstop, and slugger. Check out that water snake. If he's really still, he looks like part of the plant. That's called camouflage, and it helps him hide from both his predators and his prey. Scorpions are really awesome. Look at how they glow when you shine the right kind of light on them. I did my report on crows, one of the noisiest birds in my neighborhood. Next to the blue jay, that is, who is the crow's cousin. All that cawing must run in the family. My mom says I sleep like an elephant seal because I'm such a deep sleeper. She could practically sit on me and I won't wake up. When it's garbage night and the trash goes out, I have an alarm clock that wakes me up in the middle of the night. It's a raccoon who thinks our garbage is its gourmet meal. I can't wait to go to the wild animal park. I want to ride an elephant. Amphibians and Reptiles by Ralphie. Click on a picture if you want to find out about slimy and scaly creatures. What's the difference between an amphibian and a reptile? Amphibians, like this frog, have slimy bodies and lay their eggs in the water. Frogs and salamanders need to stay wet because some of them actually breathe through their moist skin. Reptiles, like this lizard, don't need to stay wet. They have scaly skin covering their bodies, and the scales help to keep them from drying out. Reptiles, like turtles and lizards, lay their eggs on the land. So do snakes, but some snakes and even some kinds of lizards don't lay eggs at all. Their babies come right out of their mother's bodies, just like mammals. Animals. animals who need the sun to warm up their bodies are called cold-blooded. It doesn't mean these cold-blooded iguanas are cold, just that their bodies are the same temperatures as the air around them. For most amphibians and reptiles, like this crocodile, who's cooling off in the water with its egg, that works just fine. But maybe not for this little lizard whose feet are burning up on the sand. He's out of here. 
fly me in. Gaily baby. This mother frog's tadpoles were born underwater. In fact, most amphibians, like frogs and salamanders, lay their eggs underwater so that their eggs don't dry out. But once they're grown, you can find amphibians anywhere, even gliding from trees, like this flying frog. <laughs> Reptiles, on the other hand, like iguanas, skinks, and turtles, lay their eggs up on the land. When the babies hatch, their scaly skin keeps them moist, even in the desert. Birds by Carlos. A report that is really for the birds. Or about birds, that is. Want to find out about them? Click on a picture. What makes a bird a bird? This is a bird, and this is a bird, and this is a bird. If there's one thing all birds have in common, it's feathers. In fact, they're the only animals that have feathers. Birds also have hollow bones and very light beaks instead of heavy teeth. And why do you think everything about them is so light? So they can fly. But not all birds can fly, like this big ostrich and these penguins. But most birds, all they have to do is flap their wings and take to the sky. Owls. Who, who, who finds its prey by using its hearing? The owl. Owls, like this barred owl, have really sharp hearing because their ears, which are hidden by feathers, cover the entire sides of their heads. And when owls fly, they are totally silent because they have fluffy feathers and comb-like edges on their wings. That way, they can hear their prey instead of the flapping of their own wings. And how about those eyes? They are huge. Owls' eyes take in enough starlight so that on a moonless night, owls can see as well as we can on a cloudy day. Bird beaks. Birds can't use their wings to hold things or even scratch themselves. So sometimes they use their beaks to do the job. This penguin is using its beak to feed its baby chick. When you take a look at a bird, you can also tell what it eats. Shorebirds, like this black-necked stilt, have long skinny beaks, like tweezers, that they stick into the mud when they look for worms. Flamingos and ducks have beaks that work like sieves. The water runs out and the food stays in. Beaks also work as feeding spoons when mother and father birds feed their babies. And take a look at this hummingbird's beak. It works like a straw, letting the birds sip nectar from the flowers. Wanda here, reporting on mammals. Just click on the pictures to check it out. <laughs> what is a mammal? A mammal is a warm-blooded animal with fur, like foxes, seals, and zebras. <laughs> Mammals come in all shapes and sizes, from little to giant. Some live on land and some live in the sea. But no matter where they live, all mammals breathe air. When mammal babies are born, they don't hatch from eggs. They're born live right from the mother. Mammals take really good care of their babies and they feed them milk, just like these cheetahs. Rodents. Lots of small mammals, like this little mouse, are rodents. But some rodents, like this capybara, are huge. So what makes both of them rodents? It's their teeth. Look at them on this beaver. All rodents have big front teeth called incisors. Two on the top and two on the bottom. The curious thing about rodents' teeth is they keep growing and growing and growing. So rodents like this porcupine chew on hard things like nuts and wood to keep their teeth sharp. And it's a good thing they do, because without all that gnawing, their teeth would grow right out of their head. Hoofing it. Some mammals, like this pig, have to hoof it. Animals with hooves are called ungulates. All animals with hooves are related to each other. Zebras, horses, rhinoceroses, deer, 
Camels, cows, and pigs are some of the mammals who are related because they all have hooves. Hooves are hard and flat and come in handy for running on hard ground. This paper, like all toothed relatives, is an herbivore, which means it doesn't eat meat. All ungulates' teeth are big and flat. They're made to munch grass and leaves. Marsupials by Dorothy Ann. Click on a picture if you want to hear my report. Life in a pouch. Believe it or not, this is a baby kangaroo. It was just born, and it's crawling up to its mother's pouch where it will nurse and grow. Animals that have pouches are called marsupials. Koalas are also marsupials. So are bandicoots. Honey possums. And the tree kangaroo. Most marsupials caught Australia home, including this cute potaroo. Opossum. The opossum is the only marsupial found in Australia who is also native to North and South America. An opossum's tail is prehensile, which means it can use it to grab onto things. It can even use its tail to hang upside down. If you went to South America, you'd see lots of different kinds of opossums, from big to tiny, like this little murine mouse opossum. Opossums eat fruit and any animals they can catch. Opossum babies stay in their mother's pouch for two months while they grow bigger and stronger. After that, they can go in and out. Sometimes they even take a ride clinging to their mother's back. Kangaroos. Kangaroos live all over Australia. They are great jumpers and can leap 30 feet in the air. The kangaroo babies, or joeys, can jump into their mom's pouch head first. These marsupials live in herds like deer. They kickbox for play and when they fight. There are 45 different kinds of kangaroos living in Australia. According to my research, Miss Frizzle has never taken us on an ordinary field trip. And according to my prediction of the future, she never will. My report is on domestic horses, which means horses that are tame. That's a longhorned beetle. There are lots of varieties of these guys, but one thing they all have in common is a huge appetite for wood when they're young. Maybe Miss Frizzle forgot about our trip to the wild animal park. Yeah, if we're extremely lucky. This is the report I did on insects. If you want to find out about the world of insects, click on a picture. What is an insect? Some crawl. Some fly. But all have antennae and six legs. So what are they? Insects. Creepy, crawly, camouflaging insects. Some insects, like this dung beetle, are huge. Some are so tiny, you need a microscope to see them. The one fact that bugs me about insects is, there are more insects in the world than any other animal family. Butterflies. People like me who don't like bugs make an exception for butterflies. This monarch butterfly is still wrapped up in its pupa stage, waiting to come out. It has spent weeks and weeks metamorphosing from a caterpillar. To metamorphose means to change. And here it comes, a butterfly breaking out of its cocoon. Just another few seconds and it's a colorful monarch butterfly. And why are butterflies colorful? The colors help them to attract a mate and they also let predators know that they taste awful. And who would have thought something so pretty could taste so bad? Dragonflies. Dragonflies begin their life in the water, and they are awesome predators. When they're young, they can shoot out their jaw with lightning speed and catch other insects, or even tiny fish with their clawed lip. Talk about bug-eyed, or compound bug-eyed, that is. Compound eyes are actually made up of hundreds of tiny eyes. 
that help the dragonflies see movement in all directions at the same time. That way, when they're flying, they can easily spot other bugs they want to turn into breakfast. Then zap! Dragonflies have been on this earth for millions of years. This fossil could even be as much as 300 million years old. At that time, way before the dinosaurs, some dragonflies had wingspans of up to three feet wide. Now that's what I call a big bug. This is a report on fish by me, Keisha. Want to dive in? Just click on a picture. Something's fishy. Everyone knows that fish live in water, but what exactly is a fish? All fish have backbones, they breathe through gills, they're cold-blooded, and they have fins that help them swim. Some fish live only in salty water, and some only in fresh water, but not the salmon. When it's young, the salmon swims out to the ocean. Then when it grows into an adult fish, it swims back to the freshwater river where it was born and lays its eggs. The Coral Reef. Life under the coral reef sometimes looks like you're swimming through a rainbow of colors. It's also a safe place for fish to live far away from the big, hungry, open water fish like sharks and tuna. Saddleback butterfly fish like these eat the coral polyps that grow on the reef. When saddleback butterfly fish travel together, it's hard to tell when one fish ends and the next fish begins. This long yellow trumpet fish follows the angelfish wherever it goes, and not because they're friends. When angelfish eat coral, it forces the small sea creatures who live in the coral to leave. When these sea creatures scurry out from the coral, the trumpet fish swoops down and grabs them. Amazing but true fish tales. Under the sea, there are fish and other creatures that are stranger than even I can imagine. Like these sea dragons who look just like the seaweed around them, making it hard for their enemies to find them. Clownfish, like this one, protect themselves by living inside stinging anemones. But for some reason, they never get stung father seahorses, not the mothers, carry their babies in a pouch. Sounds like a fun way to travel to me. The report I did is on endangered animals. If you want to find out about these animals, click on a picture. Why animals are endangered. Many animals around the world, like this panda, are endangered. That means that they are in danger of going extinct, disappearing forever, like the dinosaurs. So why do animals like these manatees become endangered? The main reason is the loss of their habitat. Animal habitats are sometimes destroyed so houses and shopping centers can be built, or the forests they live in are cut down for wood. Help save the animals. Today, people realize that endangered animals need our help. Habitats are being saved, so rare animals, like this white rhino, can survive. There are also laws to protect them from being hunted. The United States national bird, the bald eagle, became endangered when DDT, a pesticide used on plants, worked its way into the eagle's food. DDT didn't kill the eagles directly, but it made their eggs break. When scientists figured this out, DDT was banned in the United States. Now that the eagle's eggs are no longer breaking, more and more eagles are being born every day and are growing into strong young birds. If we all keep trying, maybe some of the other animals who are endangered will make a comeback, just like the bald eagle. Famous Endangered Animals there are some pretty famous animals that have been endangered, like this bald eagle. Animals that are still endangered include snow leopards, elephants, and humpback whales. The loss of habitat affects lots of other animals too, 
like the wolf, the Siberian tiger, and the mountain gorillas. It's sad to think that someday the only way we may get to see these creatures is in picture books. My report is on invertebrates. If you want to find out about animals without backbones, click on a picture. No bones about it. This is an orb weaver spider, and this is a ghost crab. What do these two animals have in common? They're both invertebrates, which means they don't have backbone. Invertebrates, like this sea slug, have no bones at all. Invertebrates call many places home, like this starfish who lives in the ocean, or this scorpion with her babies on her back who lives on land. Some invertebrates live both places, like this red hermit crab. Right now, it looks like he just moved into this cozy glass jar. And who said you couldn't live in a glass house? Slimy sea creatures. Some of the coolest and tastiest invertebrates live in the sea. Clams, crabs, and shrimp have shells to protect their slimy bodies. But some soft, slimy sea creatures protect themselves by having bright colors and tasting really bad. Their colors advertise, don't eat me. Sea slugs are as beautiful as butterflies and really squishy. They eat prickly sponges and stinging anemones. Spiders. Spiders, like this hairy tarantula, have fangs and eight legs. These invertebrates spin sticky webs with their silk. All spiders are carnivores. Some hunt down their prey by jumping on them on the ground. And some, like this one, wait in their web. Bam! Moth dinner. Or she can wrap it up with her silk and save it for a midnight snack. I did my report on my hamster, Scruffy. Scruffy is a rodent and is related to mice and rats. But I don't hold that against him. I've always worried about toads. Is it really true if I touch one, I'll get warts? No way, Arnold. But you might get wart hogs. Carlos. Why have just one pet when you can have a whole farm? These are my ants, and they are amazing to watch. I was thinking about directing a movie about the life of a queen termite but it's gonna have to be a really long movie because they can live for 50 years. I did my report on my kitten, Mitten. She is a domestic cat, which means she's tame and she's a pet, but she's related to wild cats all over the world. I've never met an animal I didn't like, except for the time the bus shrank and we got eaten by that tuna fish. You and me both. I don't even like looking at a tuna fish sandwich anymore. Okay, what pet is always found on the floor? I don't know. What? A car pet. My report is on Zoom for my dog. There are several hundred breeds of dogs in the world, but there's only one Zoomer. Now there's a cat who's really got her paws full. Can you tell how many kittens she has? Welcome to the Bone Show. Call me Bones, Sherlock Bones. <laughs> I see you've discovered a pile of bones. We've got to figure out who they belong to, or belonged to, I should say. <laughs> you need to finish putting this animal's skeleton together. So, have at it. <laughs> bone by all. Indeed. Fine detective work. Case.
case closed. Here's my clipboard. Now, where is that net? There it is! We need a net at the wild animal park? Change of plans, Arnold. I got a call this morning from my friend who runs the park, Ms. Annie Malia. There's been a mix-up. Four animals from the park were put back into the wild, but they were sent to the wrong habitats. That sounds dangerous. Someone should catch those animals and put them back in the right places. Excellent idea, Keisha. Class, it's time to take a field trip to the animal habitats across the world. Just click on the bus and we'll get going. I knew I should have stayed home today. Class, keep your eagle eyes open so you can be effective detectives. <laughs> Bring the clipboard, Liz. We'll need it to check the identities of the misplaced animals. Let's take chances, make mistakes, and go exploring to the bus! You're about to take off on the wildlife ride of your life. To make it official, you need to make a quick stop at the Department of Driver's Licenses. To drive the bus, you need a driver's license. Click on the ladybugs to choose different features for yourself. You can add skin colors and textures by selecting the buttons on the leaves and then sliding the parrot up and down the vine. Then, when you're picture perfect, click on the back arrow and we'll be ready to roll. With a look like that, blend into any habitat. Oh, ma! Let's face it. Mom!